Palette Master Element 1.3.19, let's talk, this is Artist Right. Before we start, subscribe if you're new and hit on the bell icon so you'll be notified every time I upload cool new videos like this. This is a revised video on 1.3.19. In the original release note, which caused a bit of a panic, everyone was seeing the fact that the i1 Pro 2 has been removed from Palette Master Element for both Mac and PC. This is not really true because when I launched the program up and test it, I can see clearly in the list that the i1 Pro 2 was there. So I got some further clarification from BenQ and it did took a while because it was during the Lunar New Year holiday so everyone was off. but. The name was put in incorrectly in the release note and now the release note has been updated to reflect the correct information. And the device that has been removed is the i1 Display 2. Now if you can still use this device to calibrate your display, my recommendation is to go get something newer because this is a really old device to calibrate display and it's about time that they have removed this from the list. So that's my thoughts about that. All right. So now let's jump into 1.3.19. My warning as usual would be, if the current version that you have installed work, just keep that version. There is no need to upgrade. So anytime you see there's a new version, do you want to upgrade? Just say no to that. If your current version works, just fine. Usually when it comes to these software are generally minor bug fixes. And if you're not affected by the bug, if the program is compatible with your system, there's very little reasons why you should upgrade because most of the time there's not any new feature that would be launched with the program. Now, if you should upgrade and for some reason it doesn't work, you can always go to BenQ.com and I'll leave a link to this specific page in the description below and download the previous version. As usual, if you know there is a version that is known to work on your machine, just download the installer as an archive anyway and just have it. I mean, chances are BenQ is not going to go back on the words and remove all these palette master elements, but it's always good to have just a copy there anyway. All right, so now let's take a look at 1.3.19 on Mac. What are some of the things that they have changed? Obviously, removing the i1 Display 2 and also compatibility with Ventura and bug fixes. So if you're running Ventura, definitely upgrade to this version. A few other things to note about the Macintosh system is that when you're running this on HDMI cable, sometimes you may get truncated signal. That means you're not outputting the signal from the computer as 0 to 255, but 16 to 235. And this is a nature of HDMI because it carries sounds and everything too so it has some tendency to truncate the signal so this may be one of the problem the other thing may be that you're not getting display signal from any Apple silicon computers onto display altogether if you're using HDMI cable in my testing I haven't found HDMI to be an issue and if you want to use HDMI you can perfectly do that what I would do and what I would recommend is to run a calibration and make sure that it passes the validation. If it does, you can continue to use the cable. If it doesn't, then I would consider using, for example, USB-C to USB-C or Thunderbolt cable. That's going to be a much more robust connection that you can use. Another thing to note as well is that on the Apple Silicon machine, if you have two BenQ SMU models with the same name, for example, two SMU270C, like I have in the studio as I'm filming right now, well, the one thing you have to do is disconnect one of the display before you start the calibration process because Palette Master Element may calibrate the incorrect display, and that's definitely something you don't want to happen. If you're using USB-C connection, just simply pull the plug and you're just calibrating one of the display at any given time. If you use a display, for instance, with either HDMI or DisplayPort, you can simply just disconnect the uplink cable and that's another way to get around it as well but these are ways to get around these issues as of now as far as windows machine goes there are bug fix removal of i1 display 2 and also support for windows 11. i know that in the latest release of windows 11 there were some issues with calibrating it on windows machine in previous version this is definitely going to help fix that issue so I'm also creating this new guide as well as called a fail validation guide. So the first question when you have a fail validation is to ask yourself, has this passed a validation before? Meaning that if you're just using on the same system and it has passed before and this one doesn't pass anymore, well, you may have to look at the variables and what have changed. For example, did you change the video card? Was the driver upgraded? Did you upgrade palette master element? All these things are things to consider within the time frame that just happened to cause the machine not to pass validation. Now, in addition to this, I will also say that there are system settings to turn off on both Mac and PC. Sometimes a lot of uh, individuals that I have helped with with Palette Master Element, it comes down to not turning off HDR, causing calibration to fail, or not turning off True Tone, causing the calibration to fail on the Mac side. So those are things to think about. And I'll leave a link to the video for both Mac and PC in the description below as well, so you can see how to turn off all these settings before you start a calibration process. 
So if you just got a brand new Mac, for instance, and you are trying to run a calibration, my best recommendation for you that get the brand new Mac is to set it up as a new machine, especially if you're coming from Intel one, because there are too many binaries that are just Intel based that has to be carried over to the Apple Silicon one that is just better off if you start fresh, start clean. This way, you know you're going to have a good operating system and one that's gonna run optimized and optimal on the newer ship. And that one other thing I want to make sure as well is that the OEM software is not running in the background. So for instance, if you have a Calibrite device and the Calibrite program is running in the background or the tray is running, this can sometimes cause the device not to be recognized or things not to work properly. So double check and make sure those are not running. I'll leave a guide on how to solve those problems as well in the description below. And lastly, Here's the thing, if you've tried to run a calibration, if it failed once, that's fine, you may try again. If it fails twice, without changing any variables, what I would start to look at are the different variables that you may change on your system before you run another calibration. I get people that reach out to me all the time. For instance, I calibrate five times, they all fail. Let me put it this way. If it fails twice, the third, fourth, and fifth time are going to fail in the exact same way. And the best thing that you can do for that is starting to narrow down the variable what may have caused that calibration failure in the first place. So those are some of the things that I want you guys to consider. All right, so now let's take a look at 1.3.19 findings on the Mac side of things. One of the bugs that I found, and this has been somewhat random, but somewhat persistent between different versions of Palette Master Element, and BenQ is still tracking this down at the moment, is when you're done with the calibration or validation, you click on finish, sometimes your screen would go blank. And it doesn't seem as if your screen turned off, the screen is still on, the backlight is still running, but it just goes blank. To simply solve this problem, just turn off the display and turn it on again, that tends to solve it for me. However, if that doesn't fix the issue, generally disconnecting the cable on the back of the display or from the computer, whichever one's easier, and replugging it back in tends to solve this problem as well. So a minor bug on there, a minor inconvenience, it's not really a big deal because the hardware calibration and everything is already written to the LUT on the display. So that's not really going to be a problem. Like I said, just some minor inconvenience. As far as Windows side of things, sometimes you may get a pop-up saying that USB connection cannot be established or something like that. Just simply restarting the system would help solve those issues, but that has been rare for that to show up. Another thing that I want to point out is that in 1.3.17 onward, BenQ have changed the profile type selection where before we have the option to choose between matrix and the different LUT type. This is really only affecting the ICC ICM profile creation process. It has nothing to do with the LUT that's built into the display, so you don't really have to worry about that. But in point 17 onwards, this has been removed. So right now we're just using metrics to calibrate the display, but this is something that definitely works and shouldn't be a problem whatsoever. Now here are some of the best calibration settings and some of the safe calibration settings that you can use. All this, what you're seeing right now, 1.3.17, 18, and 19, this has pretty much been the same for the past few versions. Although what I have been testing in this version is using absolute black. And what I found is that the current version, 0.19, tends to scale absolute black fairly well. So what I'm gonna do is leave a link to a resource file that you can download to see how the black tones are scaling on the display. If you want to experiment with absolute black, you can certainly do that. If you just want to get a good calibration and a safe setting, I would just go in and type in the black point value at 0.3 nits and you're good to go. Now, on all of those, it has an asterisk. This is if you're using, for example, one of the newer devices or devices from Calibrite or X-Rite. For example, if you have a Spider 5 or anything before that, or Spider 4, for instance, I would go in and use 0.5 as a starting value for the nit because those devices, the sensor are not quite as good and they have a problem scaling, especially the darker black tones sometimes when you're running the calibration on the display. Now, I put in the last row for both Mac and PC there. This is for Resolve. For Resolve, I haven't actually gone in and test these settings personally, but if you're doing video, these are some of the things to consider. Change the gamma to 2.4, use 0.3, and again, what I've shared with you before, you can certainly try absolute black as well and see how this would scale. With regards to Mac and PC, Mac, you can continue to use ICC Profile version 4. You should be okay. With Windows 10 and also Windows 11, use ICC Profile version 2. That's going to be the safe setting that you can use to guarantee a successful calibration with minimal conflict between ICC Profile and System. All right, and with this in mind, Every single thing I'm sharing with you, these are just suggestions. They're just guidelines. You don't have to follow them exactly to the T. If you have a setting or a formula that works well for you that you have been using, that's perfectly fine as well. However, for anyone new that wants to get a good calibration on the first try, well, this is 
those settings that you may want to use when you're running the calibration. So my recommendation as always for Palette Master Element is to download and archive previous versions. So at least you have them or at least previous known working version for your system. This way, just in case, if you ever need it, you always have access to it. Secondly, if 1.3.17 works, stick with that. If you're running on the newer OS, for example, Ventura or Windows 11, I would highly encourage you to update to 0.19, especially if the previous version is not running on your system right now or it doesn't launch for some reason. Those are the things to do. And if 0.19, for example, when you try to launch it and it crashed or something like that, well, you can always go back to 0.17 as well. That is one of the good known releases that you can definitely use and fall back on. So anyway, I hope that you find this helpful. If you have any questions or comment, leave them below. Give this a like, subscribe, and hit on the bell if you're new and in Art We Trust.